did you? And so still go there to recognize Well, it's in the up there. Oh, regrets you had. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Walking down the street, I'm gonna let it shine. Walking down the street, I'm gonna let it shine. Walking down the street, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. When I'm left in doubt, I'm gonna let it shine. When I'm left in doubt, I'm gonna let it shine. When I'm left in doubt, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.
Zena Witt. I was uh, 16, and and I I had the most <laughs> terrible dreams. I had uh, specks on on my eyes, and and and. And this uh, nervous weakness about me. Well, I I couldn't remember any any, uh, any of the books I had read. N not like Frank Drummer, who could remember page after after page. I was uh, embarrassed, and and uh, I I I stammered to all my 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 studies, and whenever I I had to stand and recite, I I I. I couldn't remember the, the, the lessons I had studied. But that's, that's when I read Dr. Weiss's advertisement. And I read it there in, 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 in print, just as if he had known all, all about me and, 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 and the dreams I, I the, the dreams I couldn't help. Well, that's when I I knew I was marked for an, an early grave. And then the dream stopped. And I slept asleep without any dreams. Up on the hill. chattering and they're chattering all day long so why not <laughs> my very dust is laughing there's this humorous thing called life this is 
Charles Blit. Reverend Wiley advised me not to divorce him. Judge Saunders advised him the same. So we step to the end of the path. And two of the children thought that he was right. Two of the children thought that I was right. And the two that sided with him blamed me. And the two that sided with me blamed him. And all were torn for grief of judging. And tortured in soul. Because they could not admire equally both him and me. Now, every gardener knows that plants grown in cellars or under stones are twisted, yellow, and weak. <laughs> and no mother would let her baby suck diseased milk from her breast. Yet preachers, Judges advise upon the race of souls where there is no sunlight, only twilight, darkness, deafness, and cold. Preachers and judges. You know. Inspiring ones. Listen to the story of the unknown. A boy reckless and wanting, wandering with gun in hand through the forest near the mansion of Aaron Hatfield. I shot a hawk perched on a tree. Pow! It fell to the ground at my feet with a guttural cry. Ah! picked him up and I, I placed him in a cage where he lived for several days calling at me when I tried to feed him. Daily I searched the realms of Hades for the soul of the hawk that I may offer up my friendship. The one whom I wounded and caged. Elizabeth Childers. Dust of my dust. And dust with my dust. Oh, child who died as you entered this world. Dead with my death. Not knowing breath, though you tried so hard. With a heart that beat when you lived with me, and stopped when you left me for life. It is well, my child. It is well. For well, you never traveled the long, long way that begins with school days. With little fingers blur under crooked letters that fall on pages. And the earliest wound when a little mate leaves you for another. And sickness, the face of fear by the bed, the death of a father or mother. Oh, shame for them. Oh, poverty. To whom will your flowery face turn to? Botanist, weakling, cry of what blood is to yours. Pure or foul, for it make no matter. It is blood that calls to our blood. And what of your children? What of their sorrow? 
Child, child, death is better than life. Mississippi. The secret of the stars, gravitation. The secret of the earth, layers of rock. The secret of the rock, the soil. The secret of the soil, to receive seed. The secret of man, the sower. The secret of woman, the soil, my secret, under a rock, you shall never find. Walter Simmons. When I was a little boy, my parents thought that I would be as great as Edison or greater. For you see, as a little kid, I would make little interventions with toys and kites on strings and cans of bread that would run on tracks for miles and miles on. And, and I kept thinking of something that would make me of an innovator. And I studied and studied calculus of different engines to become one innovator. But then, 21, I married and had to live. And so to live, I played the villain of the Octoron and took the engine store in the square and kept thinking. 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 Not of business, but of the engine of the calculus to make the little innovator work. And all Spoon River watched and waited for it to see it work. It never worked. It never worked. And a few kind souls believed that my genius was somehow hampered by the store, but that wasn't true. The truth was this. I didn't have the brains. Over and over they used to ask me while buying the wine or the beer in Peoria first, later in Chicago, Denver, Frisco, New York, wherever I lived, how I happened to lead the life. And what was the start of it? Well, I told them a silk dress and the promise of a marriage from a rich man. It was Lucius Atherton. But that was not really it at all. Suppose a boy steals an apple. That's a tray from a grocery store. 
and they all begin to call him a thief. The editor, the minister, the judge, a thief, a thief, a thief. And he can't get work, he can't get bread without stealing it. Why, the boy will steal. It's the way the people regard the theft of the apple that makes the boy who he is. Elsa Wharton. I was peasant girl from Germany. I was blue eyed, rosy, happy, <laughs> strong. <laughs> and the first place that I work was at Thomas Green, one day. When she was away, he stole into the kitchen and uh, he took me right in his arms and, and he kissed me on the throat and then, and then neither of us knew that happened. And, and I cried. I cried. I cried for, for what would become of me. Then I cried as my secret began to show. <laughs> and then one day, she said she would make no trouble for me. And being childless, would take the baby. And one day, the, the baby was born. They were so kind to me. Later, I, I married Gus Wartman. <laughs> years later, when the passers-by thought that I was crying at the eloquence of Hamilton Green. No, no, that was not it, no. I wanted to say that my son, that my son, The long black train coming down the line, feeding off the souls that are lost in crying. Rails of sin, only evil remains. Watch out, brother, for that long black train. Got me a ticket for the long way round. The one with the prettiest of views. It's got mountains, it's got rivers, it's got sides to give you shivers. The show would be prettier with you. When I'm gone, when I'm gone, you're gonna miss me when I'm gone. You're gonna miss me by my walk. You're gonna miss me by my talk. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. Or 
or for writing up the canning factory to get people to invest. Or <laughs> for suppressing the news about the banks when they were rotten and ready to break. <laughs> or did you ever hear of a circuit court judge helping anyone other than the Q Railroad and the bankers? <laughs> or Reverend Pete? Or Reverend Sibley ever donating any part of their salary they earn by speaking out or keeping silent as the leaders requested them to? <laughs> All to the building of the waterworks. <laughs> Yet I, Daisy Frazier, never passed along the streets. Always, always, the rows of Nods and smiles and laughs and coughs and words such as, there she goes. <laughs> I never appeared before Justice Army without contributing at least $10 in funds to the Spool River, <laughs> Spoon River School Project. A stepmother drove me from home, embittering me. A squaw man, a flaneur, and diligent took my virtue. <laughs> For years I was his mistress. No one knew. <laughs> From him, I learned the parasite cunning from which I moved with the flux like a flea on a dog, all the time being nothing but very private with different men. <laughs> Daniel the Radical, <laughs> he had me for years. His sister said I was his mistress. And Daniel wrote me a shameful letter soiling our beautiful love. My lesbian friend, she took a hand. She hated Daniel's sister. And Daniel despised her midget husband. She saw a chance for a poisonous thrust. I must complain to the wife of Daniel's pursuit. But before I did that, I begged him to come to London with me. Why don't we just stay here, just as we always have, he said. Well, I turned submarine on him and, and repulsed his revenge into the arms of my diligent friend. And up to the surface I came, bearing the letter that Daniel wrote, proving that my honor was intact. Showing it to his wife, my lesbian friend, and to everyone. <laughs> Willard Fluke. My wife lost her health and dwindled until she weighed scarce 90 pounds. And that woman, whom the men styled Cleopatra, came along. And we, we married ones, all broke our vows. Among myself among the rest. Years passed, and one by one, death seemed to claim them all in some hideous form. And I began to write, write and write, reams on reams of the second coming of Christ. And I was born, I was born upon dreams of God's particular grace for me.
head, Christ came to me and he said, go into the church and stand before the congregation and confess your sin. But just as I stood up and began to speak, I saw my little girl, my little girl sitting in the front seat. Dredge, 
and cut the house in two like a curtain. But at the commercial, I saw a man who winked at me as I asked him for work. It was Wash McNeely's son. He proved the chain of the link to ownership of half, half the ownership of the mansion with promises suit me the scissors. So you see, the house was solely waiting for me since the day I was born. Percy Shelley. Shoe horses sent me to the University of Monterey. <laughs> I learned nothing there. I returned home, went back to roaming the fields with Bert Kessler, <laughs> quail and snipe. <gasps> At Thompson's Lake, <laughs> the trigger of my gun caught the, the end of the side of my boat, <laughs> and a great hole was shot through my heart. <laughs> stands the figure of a woman carved by an Italian artist. They say that the ashes of my namesake were scattered nearby a pyramid by the name of Caius Sestius. Somewhere near Rome.
to love and tell him that my love for you, no less than my love for him, wrought out my destiny, and that through the flesh I won spirit, and through spirit, peace. There is no marriage in heaven, but there is love. Benjamino Pantier. Together in this grave, by Benjamin Pantier, attorney at law, and Nick, his dog. Constant companion, solace and friend. Down the long gray road of life, I saw many Children, friends, men and women pass from this life to the next, leaving me all alone with Nig as my companion, bedfellow, comrade in drink. But the she who survives me snared my soul with a snare that bled me to death. I know. He said that I snared his soul with a snare that bled him to death. But suppose you are really a lady, and you have delicate tastes, and, and the rhythm of Wordsworth's ode, it runs in your ears, and you loathe the smell of whiskey and onion. very man who fills you with disgust every time you think of it. Every time? Yes. While you think of it. Every time you look at him. And that. That. That is why once I was strong of will, but now I just lay broken and indifferent. Living my life out, sleeping in the back office in a dingy room with Nig. <laughs> Is why I drove him to live in his dingy office at the back with his dog. Under my jawbone lie the bony nose of Nick. Our story is lost forever. Goodbye, mad world. Dorcas, 15. I was not beloved by the villagers, but all because I spoke my mind. And I met those who transgressed against me with plain remonstrance, or hiding or nurturing secret griefs or grudges. The tale of the Spartan boy is greatly praised, who hid the wolf beneath his cloak, letting it devour him uncomplainingly. It is better, I think, to snatch the wolf forth and fight him openly, even in the streets amidst dust and hell. 
the pain. The tongue may be an unruly member, but silence poisons the soul. Berate me who will, I am content. Were you not ashamed, fellow villagers? You, who hounded me in life to give, give, give to the poor, to the church, to the village, me, who had already given much. <laughs> and think you not, I did not know the pipe organ which I gave to the church played its christening songs on the day that Deacon Rhodes, who all but ruined me, worshipped. For the first time after his acquittal? Oh. Rosie Roberts. I was sick. <laughs> but more than that, I was mad at the crooked police and the crooked game of life. So I wrote the chief of Peoria. I'm here in my girlhood home of Spoon River. But come, take me. I killed the son of the merchant prince and Madame Lewis. And the papers, they said that he killed himself while cleaning the hunting gun. <laughs> Lied like the devil for the bribe of advertising. In my room, I shot him because he knocked me down when I said, in spite of all the money he had, I was gonna go see my love that night. Minerva, the village poetess. Who did that? Shared that by the yahoos of the street. For my heavy body, my cock eye, and my rolling walk. And all the more would Butch Welding captured me after a brutal hunt. He left me to my fate with Dr. Myers, and I sank into a death growing numb from the feet up deeper and deeper into a stream of ice. Will someone go to the village newspaper and gather into a book the verses I wrote? I thirsted so for love. I hungered so for life. No other man, unless it was Doc Hill, did more for people in this town than I. And all the weak, the halt, the improvident, and those who could not pay flocked to me. I was good hearted. Easy, Dr. Myers. I was healthy. And ha happy, in comfortable fortune, blessed with a congenial mate, my three children raised and wedded, doing well in the world. And then one night, Minerva. Village poetess 
came to me with a child. Crying. I tried to help her out. She died. They indicted me. The newspapers disgraced me. My wife perished of a broken heart. And pneumonia finished me. I was only eight years old, and before I grew up and knew what it meant, I had no words for it, except I was frightened, and I told my mother, and my father got a pistol and would have killed Butch, except for his mother. Nonetheless. The story clung to me. But the man I married, a widower of 35, was a newcomer and had never heard of it until two years after our marriage. And then he considered himself cheated. And the village all agreed that I wasn't really a virgin. And then he deserted me. And I died the following winter. If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why then, oh, why can't I?
must I blame for me and for you? And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day and the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Every color of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, but also on the faces of people passing by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than we'll ever know. And I think to myself, somewhere. to Spring River, I, I didn't know if what they told me was true or false. They come into my shop, hand me an epitaph, stand around while I work, say things like, he was such a moral gentleman. She was such an outstanding mother. Model Christian, consistent Christian. I just never knew what to write, but I just wrote what they told me to write. All in ignorance of the truth. You know, after I lived here a while amongst the people, I, I came to realize just how near to the lives those epitaphs were to the dead. Why, well, it doesn't matter, you know. It, a historian, he writes things, he doesn't know the truth, he writes. Sometimes he writes to keep a secret. Spoon River. I tried to rise above you. I was ashamed of you as the place of my nativity. But in Rome, among the artists, speaking French, speaking Italian, <laughs> I often felt sometimes like I was free of every trace of my origin. But they, they would look at my work 
and they would say things like, what are you driving at, my friend? Sometimes the face looks like Apollo's. Other times, it looks like Lincoln. Bah! They had no culture there, you know? Spoon River? I burned with shame. And I hungered and desired for something greater. But I was covered up and weighted down with western soil. What could I do but aspire and pray for rebirth in this world with all of Spoon River rooted out of my soul? Mrs. Mary. Silent. As I stood before the jury, when a judge asked if I had all to say against the sentencing, <laughs> what could I say to people who thought that a woman at 35 was at fault when her boyfriend of 19 killed her husband. <laughs> Even though I said to her over and over, go away, Elmer, oh, go far, far away. I mad in your brain with the gift of my body. <laughs> oh, oh, I fear that you shall do some terrible thing. And just as I feared, he killed my husband. Oh, with which I had nothing to do before God. Silent. For 30 years in prison, and the iron gates of Joliet swung as the gray and silent trustees carried me out. Butcher McGee and Ollie McGee. She took my strength by minutes. She took my life by hours. She made my feverish days and pains into smiles. She was the one who wanted me more. And I told her to go away many times. And I told her many a time, go away, Ollie. 
I don't need you. And just as I told her over and over to keep going and keep going, just as I feared, she died and haunted me. Hunted me for life. Ugh. Have you seen a man walking through the village with downcast eyes and haggard face? That is my husband, who by secret cruelty and never to be told, robbed me of my youth and my beauty. Till at last, wrinkled and with yellow teeth and broken pride and shameful humility, I sank into the grave. What think you not of my husband's heart? The face of what I was. The face of what he made me. These, these are driving him to the place where I lie. In death, therefore, I am avenged. Something about death, like love itself. If it's someone whom you've known, um, passion, <laughs> and uh, the uh, glow of uh, youthful love. <laughs> yes, it's true that when you're with someone, year by year, <laughs> eventually the uh, fire begins to fade. Uh, and thus, uh, um, uh, fade away together, uh, gradually, faintly, delicately, uh, slowly. <laughs> were with us, together in each other's arms, as we walk from this familiar room. That is the power of unison between souls. <laughs> like love, love itself. <laughs> Then 
Sam Bookie. for the soul. It's an interesting sight. I saw a dark shadow and he cursed me. He said, served me right. Eugene Carmen. Gene Carbon's sudden death got me next in line for a promotion for $50 a month. <laughs> so I went home and I told my family about it, my wife and my kids, you know. <laughs> but the promotion never came. You see, old Rhodes had suspected that I was the one who had stolen the blankets. And I did, but only only to sell them to pay for my little girl's medical bills. Well, he said that if I confessed, that he would be lenient on me. So I did. I did confess. But he didn't care. That night, the constable came to my house and arrested me, and all the newspapers have made me out to be a thief! A thief! Every paper. And the Weedon, and the Clarion, they all made me out to be a thief. And how my children cried.
go see good Dr. Myers. And now you know how it is I got to be here. And now, no full hymn. I was the first fruits to enter the battlefield of Missionary Ridge. When I felt the bullet enter through my heart, I wish I had stayed at home and gone to jail for stealing the hogs of Curl Trenary. Instead of running away and joining the army. And yet, under these words of my gravestone, that I live with complete regret, lie the words pro patria. What do they mean anyway? a sacred chord that David played and it pleased the Lord but you don't really care for music do you it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall the major lift the baffled king composed and hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof, her beauty and her moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to her kitchen chair. She cut your throne and she cut your hair. And from her lips she drew the hallelujah. 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 Maybe I've been here before I know this room And I've walked this floor I used to live alone Before I knew you And even though I've seen your flag on arch Love is not a victory march It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 Almost a shell of a woman after the surgeon's knife. And almost a year to creep back into strength until the dawn of our wedding decennial. It found me 
my seeming self again, and we went for a walk in the forest by a path of, of soundless moss and turf. But I couldn't look in your eyes, and you couldn't look into my eyes for such a sorrow as ours. Oh, the beginning of gray in your hair, and, and I but a shell of myself. And what did we talk of? Of sky, of water, of air. God, most anything but to hide our thoughts. And then there was your gift of wild roses set on our table to grace our dinner. Oh, poor hearts. How bravely you struggled to imagine and remember beautiful rapture. And then, and then my spirit drooped as night came on. And I went to my room alone as when I was a bride. You left me alone. Oh, poor heart. And then I look into the mirror something says, one should be all dead when one is half dead, nor ever mock life, nor ever cheat love, and, and, and I did it! Louise Smith. Engagement of eight years. When Annabelle returned to the village from the seminary. Oh, oh if I'd let my love for him alone, who oh, knows? It may have grown into a beautiful sorrow. Filling my life with a healing fragrance. She could keep her hands off me. <laughs> so naturally, I married her. Ooh, well, I thought, you know, our marriage would last forever. I thought she'd never leave me. Or a few leave, and none ever resign. He ran away and was gone for a year. 
That's right. I ran away and I was gone on a year. Just on a lark. Well, I just decided that one day I was going to go fishing. So I was rowing on my boat, you see. Well, that's what I told her. <laughs> I told her that pirate had kidnapped me off the river over near Van Buren Street and hog tied me up and chained me so that I couldn't ride her. Oh, when he came home, he told me these silly stories of being kidnapped by pirates on Lake Michigan and held in chains so he could not write me. I pretended to believe it, though I knew very well what he was doing and that he was meeting the milliner, Mrs. Williams, now and then, when she went into town, as she said. And when I came back, oh, how she missed me and how she cried. <laughs> she said, oh, it was so inhumane and so cruel. <laughs> oh, she couldn't stop kissing me. But a promise is a promise, and marriage is marriage. And our respect for my own character, I refused to be drawn into a divorce by the scheme of a husband who had simply grown tired of his marital vow and duty. And that's when I knew that our marriage was a divine marriage that would never, ever separate us. Or so I thought. We were separated by death. Lydia Humphrey. brothers and sisters in the congregation mm -hmm. and children in the church. Mm. Well, I know they laughed at me and thought me queer. I knew of those eagle souls that flew high above the church spire, laughing at the church, the same old church not seeing me. <laughs> but if that sweet air was good to them, sweet was the church to me. <laughs> it was the vision, the vision, the vision of the poet democratized. <laughs> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Walking down the tree, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. 
coming. My name is Lisa Cohen, and I co-directed this wonderful production with Bear Sanchez. We'd like to thank you all for coming to the Creative Outlet of Orange, where we look forward to sharing many more creative experiences with you. Thank you again, and don't forget to let it shine. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.